Hello aspirants, welcome to GS score, myself Ashutosh and today in our session we are going to see the current affairs through MCQs for art and culture. Friends, as you know, we are conducting the All India PT mock test. The date of the next mock test is 10th May. Do attempt this mock test, scan this QR code and visit the site for the more information. Let's uh, take the our first question. The first question is about a recently seen in news and uh, it's about Sheroidoi Moidums, which was seen in recently in news. It is related with uh, friends. India for the year 2023 has recommended the has nominated the name of this site for the inclusion in World Heritage Center for the year 2023. India has nominated this and uh, this site for inclusion in the World Heritage Center list. So this uh, became our uh, prominent thing to understand for this session that uh, this Shadoi Moidams was uh, is related with which of the following cave painting from Sulawai. No, it's not a cave painting from Sulawai, not a cave painting from Tipura also. A part of sacred group in Assams. No, our answer is burial mounds. Uh, friends, this, uh, this Shadoi Doi or the Moidams are a part of the burial mounds in Assam. In Assam, there was a, a home kingdom a home kingdom which was ruling which uh, was ruling in the year 1228 AD along the foothills of along the foothills of Patkai range this was a range on which this a home kingdom was ruling and this shiroid moidams were the burial mounds for those royal families they are the royal bu uh, burials fine so uh, one thing more important here I, I would like to say that with regard to a home kingdom it was a medieval uh, and uh, kingdom and its founder its founder was Chaolong Sukhafa and the information we get about this kingdom is from is from Changrung Fukan, which is a cano canonical text developed by Ahoms, and these provided details about the different aspects of these Moidams or Maidams. Fine, guys. As you know, uh, just we get a little bit information about Patkai range. As you know, the Patkai range is this is the range following the Patkai range it goes to a, it also includes the Garo Khasi and Jaintia hills and this is the location of Assam so on the foothills of this Pat, Patkai range uh, a home kingdom was there and this mound is situated on this line fine uh, Patkai range as uh, friends it's a part of geography but you should know there are a series of mountain ranges in the indo Myanmar border it's falling in the northeast state of India and it includes within the range it includes the state of arunachal pradesh nagaland fine and the upper burma region of Myanmar. and they were the same uh, created during the same period as of the himalayas and but as not uh, are rugged as the himalayas and its peak are much lower fine so uh, as we have seen they also includes the garo khasi and jaintia hills and further we will see that the this is the burial mound called Shiroidoms, Moidoms, which was seen in the news recently, and UPSC can ask this question on this mound. Fine. Uh, one thing more I would like to say that the cave paintings from Sulawai, uh, it was in, in news recently, like to, from 1.5 years back, and this cave painting of Sulawai, as you can see, this in the Indonesian island of Sulawai, this cave paintings were found with the picture of a boar, wild boar, it's a wild boar. Fine. And it's, and it's a Pelistisone, Pelistocene era rock painting. It's a Pelistocene era rock painting. It's the one of the oldest known cave art because it's more than 45,000 years old ago. Fine. So that makes end our first question. 
that this Sarada Moems was the burial mound of royal family of Ahom kingdoms. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is about uh, consider the following statements regarding various artistic depiction of Buddha. Friends, artistic depiction of Buddha have a prominence uh, with regard to coming into the UPSC exams. And last year, uh, there was a news that in Gaya, Gaya, a reclining Buddha would be constructed and it was one of the highest in India. Fine. So, this makes the context very clear. So, let's look at the first statement. Uh, the U UNESCO World Heritage Site of Ajanta houses only standing Buddhas. The reclining Buddha was first depicted in Gandhara art, which attained peak during the Kusana period. The largest reclining Buddha in the world is in Kusinagar, Uttar Pradesh. So, we have to find the incorrect statements. Friends, the first statement itself is incorrect. Why it's incorrect? Because we find the uh, you know, uh, not only standing but declining, uh, reclining Buddha. You know, but we find the reclining Buddha in the cave number 26 of Ajanta. Fine. In the cave number 26, we find 24 feet long Buddha. Um, and it's a sculpture. And this is the reclining Buddha, as you can see in the next picture. This is the uh, reclining Buddha we found, we, we find in Ajanta. Fine. So, you can see the sizes here and you can see also that Buddha is in a state of meditation just before attending the Mahaparinirvana or the salvation and he was looking so, uh, a kind of weak here also. So, uh, we find this uh, statement incorrect as we also uh, do, we, we do find uh, declining, reclining Buddha, not only standing Buddha in the world at the site of Ajanta. Second statement is, I think, correct because uh, the reclining Buddha was first depicted in the Gandhara art. That's true and attained peak during the Kusana period. Now, this Gandhara art, friends, as you know, was between 50 before Christ up to the 7 AD in the different, like uh, it came up to the, it, it reached its high during the Kusana period also and it uh, continued till the 7 AD. So, that makes statement two correct. So, we have to find the incorrect one. So, 1 and 3 would be incorrect. Now, the last statement, why 3 is incorrect, is the largest reclining Buddha in the world is Kushinagar, Uttar Pradesh. No, it's not in Kushinagar. As I have said earlier, that in Gaya, it would be, the government would be building a, a you know, highest, uh, large, largest reclining Buddha in Gaya and it's not in Kushinagar. And the uh, in, in terms of world, the largest reclining Buddha largest reclining Buddha is found in that it's a 600 foot dimension and it's found in Vinsain Tavya in Myanmar. Fine. And it was built in year 1992. So, this makes the third uh, statement incorrect and the factual information you can get it from here. That the reclining Buddha largest is found in the Myanmar. Friends, as you can see, that uh, as I have told earlier, that government of India would be building a, a largest reclining Buddha in India uh, in the Gaya. And a uh, friend, as, as you know, that Gaya was a very famous place, and the situation uh, and the Gaya is located on which river? Palgo River. Fine. Both Gaya is on the banks of the Falgu river. It's also called Niranjan river, Niranjana river. Sometimes you can see ask such type of question of the look of the location of the famous Buddhist sites and their rivers. Just last year it has also asked about the location of Ajanta and other stupas and their geographical identifications. Fine. Friends, what we have to know other than this information is that the uh, this reclining Buddha, as I have said earlier, represents the Buddha during his last illness about just in to enter the Parin Nirvana and the statue, uh, you can see here uh, sometime uh, very factual information can also be asked with regard to the reclining Buddha and his dimension. He is re resting on his right shoulder and it is in position of deep meditation and it also shows that a common man can also such kind of salvation after attaining the enlightenment. Fine. Uh, when Buddha died, 
uh, when he was uh, 80 years old though his uh, period of reign is uh, debated still but uh, he died in the uttar pradesh in kushinagar he died in kushinagar at the age of 80 years old with regard to the second statement gandhara art as you can see in the picture this was the gandhara and, and the depiction of buddha in the gandhara art you can see the elaborated and elongated hair style his draperies his eyes being closed and in deep meditation you can focus on the clothings which reflect the gandhara influence and time and again upsc has asked this kind this kind of questions with regard to the image and depiction of buddha in various forms so friends this uh, question is clear our answer is one and three because it's asking incorrect fine so let's move on to the ne next question which is about uh, uh, kabir uh, bhakti shant kabir and we have to consider the statement which are correct regarding him so friends let's see the statement verses of kabir can be found in gurugan sahib that's a very correct statement and kabir was a contemporary of sultan sikandar lodi it's also a correct statement. We'll see it here. So our answer would be both one and two. Uh, first, look at the in, in information. Something regarding Kabir. He was a saint of bhakti movement. He was a saint of bhakti movement, and his period was said to be something between 1398 to 1518. But sometimes some scholars say that his age can also be 1498. And in this period, Sultan Sikandar Lodi was reigning as a Sultan of Delhi Sultanate. So he was a con contemporary of him. Further, we all uh, can understand that Kabir uh, did not believe in any religious discrimination and he readily accepted all the religions and he founded a Kabir Panth. He founded a Kabir Panth and his followers were known as Kabir Panthis. Fine. He was born in the city of Varanasi. He was born in the city of Baranasi, which is in Uttar Pradesh. Fine. And his verses are found in the Guru Granth Sahib. Now, uh, uh, sometime UPSC asks about the influences uh, uh, of uh, saints on the various things, like the Kavi was highly influenced by uh, his Guru Rama Nanda. Rama Nanda was his Guru, and, uh, and he was also a Vaishnavite saint. He was also a Vaishnava saint, and uh, one thing very interesting about his, you know, era was that he said that the caste system is very ob obsolete. Caste system is obsolete. Why he uh, said that? He said that uh, if, if with, re with regard to the reference from Ramayana. Lord Ram has eaten some fruits or travelled in the boat of a, a Navik. So uh, he did uh, when the Lord himself did not regarded uh, uh, caste as a determinant factor. So how we human being can discriminate on the basis of caste? So uh, Ramananda, as a bhakti saint, has proposed that the caste is obsolete and we don't have to follow the caste. And he thereafter pro uh, propagated the bhakti movement through the Vaishnavism. Vaishnavism influence and so we can see that both our one and two statement are correct here so let's move on to the next question uh, the next question is about the following temple which of the following temple or sites are related with Jainism time and again this question uh, is being asked by UPSC and we are trying to cover from this session the uh, maximum possible number of a uh, question which can be asked with regard to Buddhism and Jainism. So we have taken this question on Jainism that which of the following temple or sites are related with Jainism? Girnar, Dedwara temple, Ashtapada temple. Fine. Friends, these all sites are related or are the temples of Jain, Jainism. Fine. 1, 2 and 3 is the correct option. With regard to Girnar, Girnar is in the state of Gujarat. And why it's a temple or it's a famous site? Because here the 22nd Tiranthakara, 22nd Tiranthakara, Neminath, Neminath has attained Nirvana. He has attained Nirvana. The name of the Tiranthakara was Neminath. Friends, so you have come across the term Tiranthakara. The term Tiranthakara 
came from the word tiranth. Tiranth means a religious visit, fine, from which you can attain salvation. So, tiranthakar here denotes the saints who have achieved the salvation and they, are, and they will uh, allow you to follow a path to attain the salvation. So, so that's why they were called tiranthakaras. In Jainism, they are, uh, they are 24 Tirantakaras till now. And the second statement is about Dilwara temple. Friends, you know, this Dilwara temple is very famous temple. It's in Mount Abu. Fine. It's in Mount Abu. And it's a marvelous stone carving, as you can see in the pictures. It's a marvelous stone carving. It's a very, you know, uh, interesting uh, features uh, is being situated in this uh, temple at Mount Abu. And one more thing, in very interesting with regard to Mount Abu, that... It also related with the literary evidences of origin of Rajputs. Fine. Uh, with regard to this Dilwara temple, uh, what you can see that it was the built between the year 11th to 13th, the 13th century AD, and it's the related with the Shwetambaras, related with the Shwetambara sect of Jainism. Fine. It's in Rajasthan. And the striking feature of this temple, as you can see, the it houses the five separate, five separate temples for five tiranthakaras, for five tiranthakaras. And those name of the five saints were are Mahavir, fine Adinath, Parshavnath, Rishabdev. And Neminath. So these five Tirandhakaras have their temples uh, related uh, with them in this Dilwara temple at Mount Abu. Fine. With regard to the third option, Astapara. Astapara is a uh, you know it's in China. You can say it's in China, nearby Ladakh, uh, and it's in Sichuan province of China. Fine, and here it is believed to have been the Nirvana site, Nirvana site for first Jain Tranthakara, and his name was Rishabdev. So, this is very interesting information. UPSC can ask such kind of exceptional information in prelims. So, we have to be very careful and be very alert of this kind of information. Fine. So, friends, uh, we can also see that in Jainism, many sites are famous for uh, attainment of moksha for Tiranthakara. As in the previous uh, sections and sessions, we have seen about the Samet Sikhar and it was for Parshavnath. So, uh, these kind of information have to be given with the, from the point of view of UPSC prelims. Fine. So, as we have seen, the very interesting picture here of the Mount Abu Dilwara. Uh, the next question is about the consider the following pairs that they are matched correctly or not. Fine. And we have to find the correct option. The first is Atharved medicine. It's mentioned about medicine. Sulubha Sutra, it has a mention about mathematics. And Gandharva Ved, it has the mention about music. So only one correct, two correct, one and three, and all of the above. So, friends, our, our option would be all of the above are correct. Why? Atharveda is presently a this Atharved, as you can see is both in prose and poems it's a it's a part of veda literature also and it's a deal with the very mantras with regard to the wording of diseases and uh, it, it also contains some chains of magic and spells by which one come over could uh, you know the enemies also and demons so mostly it contains with the information about the uh, diseases and the mantras and the solutions which can be provided for eradicating as disease. Further, the Sulba Sutra, with regard to Sulba Sutra, Sulba Sutra uh, is a larger corpus of text called, Sulba Sutra is a larger corpus of text called Sharauta Sutra and in this Sarut Sutra, we find Sulba Sutra which deals with the mathematics and it also, uh, the, the, this uh, Sarutta Sutra is also considered to be the appendix to the Veda and is the only source of knowledge of Indian mathematics from the Vedic period. Fine. Maths from the Vedic period is, all, is only found from this era. Vedic math you can find. Uh, further, the Gandharva Ved, as you know, this is the origin of music and it's a Upaved. Gandharva Ved is a form of Upaved 
is coming from Samaved, a study of all art forms including music, dance, including music, dance and poetry too. Fine. And it is the one of the uh, four main Upavedas attached to the Samaved. And uh, the Gandharv, obviously the name came from after the Gandharvas or the celestial beings or Devtas. Fine. So, let's take to the next question. It's regarding the Quinus system. It's very important from Plin's point of view of ancient India are correct. Friends, as you know, the coinage were in, uh, came in the news uh, uh, recently uh, with regard to the, you know, uh, the context has been taken from the debate with that whether the names of gods and uh, Devi Devtas can be inscribed on the coins or the notes. So, from that context, it uh, is being related. And further, coinage holds a very important aspect of ancient India to know to reconstruct the history of ancient India or medieval India. Fine, the economic and social history can also be reconstructed with it. So, first of all, we have to look into the uh, coinage system. According to the uh, archaeological uh, evidences, the coinage system have started from the 7th to 6th century BC. Fine. Uh, the first coin of uh, the sorry the first coin of um, the first coins of punch mark types were mostly made of silver the third statement kushanas were the first to introduce the coins bearing names and images of rulers who issued those coins so we have to consider this these three statement and we have to find the correct ones so, so let's look at the first statement it says the archaeological evidence suggests that these uh, the coin system started from the 6th to 7th century BC. That is the correct statement. Why? Because we find the evidence of early coins from the Mahajanpads. From the Mahajanpadas, we find the early evidences of coins. And these coins were called the punch mark coins. Fine. They are mostly made of the silver also and some other metal like gold and coppers. But first, look at the first statement that uh, uh, the evidences are from the early evidence are from of the punch mark coin from Mahajanpadas, and these Mahajanpadas have a very interesting uh, system of punch marks. That their uniqueness lies in the punch system, in which symbols, uh, you know, as you can see here, as you can see here, in, in which the symbols were punched on the coins with a separate punch. For each symbol, a separate punch was used, and you can see there was a some related to three to five punches on each coin. Fine. And the advanced stage was besides the Mahajan part from 6th century BC. We also find till the uh, 3rd century BC of during the period of Mauryan and post Mauryan. These were in the vows. And uh, from the starting of the post Mauryan, we see the Kusana coins. Fine. So uh, we have to see that uh, in terms of coin is as you can see from the images these are the punch mark coins of the early period and they were mainly made from the silver and uh, there are other materials also been used like gold and coppers fine but they were uh, came in the different eras so our second statement is also correct the first coins of the movement of the silver the third statement is kusana were the first to introduce the coins bearing names and images of the rulers who issued those coins. No, it's an incorrect statement. Why it's incorrect? It was not the Kushana, but Indo-Greeks. Indo-Greeks were the first to introduce the coins bearing the names and images of rulers who issued them. Fine. So, as you can see, these were the Indo-Greek coins and it contains the images of uh, go sometimes gods or rulers who issued them. Fine. And with regard to the more information about this, I would like to say that uh, in all the phases of the coins were mainly made of silver, copper, gold and nickel. And further, the uh, you know, what were introduced by the Kushana were the gold and copper coins. These two form of coins, uh, these two metals were used by Kushana and the largest evidence or in the largest number of gold coins were issued by Guptas. So you don't have to be confused with this, this regard that they were the first to issue, the Kushana were the first to issue the gold coins and in largest number who issued the Guptas issued in the largest number. So that makes our uh, answer only one and two correct D because uh, 
the third statement is incorrect in itself and as as we have seen from the images of coins so there's a there will be a bit more clarity over here fine so next come on, on the next uh, statement the next question uh, says about the gandhi mandela award for the year 2022 was conferred upon this has been in news and this uh, gandhi mandela award was conferred upon dalai lama friends this gandhi Man, uh, mandela award uh, was constituted by the uh, gandhi mandela foundation gandhi mandela foundation this foundation constituted this award on the you know birth 150th birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi so this award has been constituted and this has been awarded to dalai lama uh, and dalai lama 14 dalai lama fine and the uh, you know but why this uh, award is uh, uh, conferred to promote the values of uh, and ideals of mahatma gandhi and nansen mandela and these are awarded in the fields of establishing peace social welfare culture environment education etc fine So these awards are conferred mainly in, in these fields and this Gandhi Mandela Foundation is a registered organization, trust uh, and a not-profit organization um, and established by the government of India. Fine. So this answer is Dalai Lama 14, the Gandhi Mandela Award. It can be asked in UPSC. So I have taken this question because it's very recent context. The next question is very interesting question with regard to some points. The Archaeological Survey of India has unearthed a Buddhist monastery believed to be at least 900 years old, buried under a mound in a village near Juljul Pahar of Sitagari hills in which of the following states. So friends, recently Archaeological Survey of India has found this Buddhist monastery in the area, in this region of Sitagari hills and the Sitagari hills is in a state of Jharkhand. So our answer would be Jharkhand. Now with regard to the spine, I will say that Buddhist monasteries dominate the uh, questions of UPSC and in, in this regard, the some factual information is very important to know that it's something around uh, the monastery which has been found, it's something around 900 year old and uh, it's in Joljul Pahar, Sitagari Hills and it was buried under the mound and the findings and the findings in terms of findings we find the image images of tara in varad mudra or giving the boon so the image of tara has been found here tara is a form of tantrism tantrism form of buddhism which came into prominence in during the 10th century and the 9th century ad and you, as you can see from the figures, this is Tara. Fine. Uh, her image has been depicted in various literatures, and her image has also been found in this uh, Juljul Pahar in of in Buddhist monastery. Fine. So the you know as with with regard to uh, this monastery, one more important find has been there that. Uh, After, besides the Tara, we have also find Buddha in Bhumi Sparsa Mudra. Besides Tara, we find the Buddha in the Bhumi Sparsa Mudra. As you can see, his all five fingers are pointing towards the earth to let witness, witness who? Goddess Earth, that I have attained the salvation without being disturbed by any senses. Fine. So these are the main of the are the main depictions in the <coughs> Buddhist monasteries. Fine. So uh, as you know, uh, this uh, uh, Tara in the Vardhan Avatar, and she is uh, having a thunderbolt. It's a part of Bajrayan Sakha, and this Tara is uh, the worship of Tara in Tantrism form is a uh, is a form of Bajrayan. This uh, Bajrayan Sakha. And it's a use. It has a use role to play also in the formation of some scripts uh, in during the early medieval era of, in some parts of India. 
fine. Uh, with regard to the other information, in this Buddhist uh, monastery, we also find some uh, sculptures. We also find some uh, sculptures related with the Shavite deity or deities, Maheshwari, which is a uh, also uh, depicts a kind of cultural assimilations. And we also find the Nagari script. Nagari is a predecessor of uh, Dev Nagari script. And this Nagari script on the Tara statue has been found. Now, this Buddhist monastery is very close to the old route. This Buddhist monastery is very close to an old route to Varanasi, old route to Varanasi near Sarnath, where Buddha has given his first sermon. So, it is very important to know the location also and uh, with regard to its significant location that is very close and it is on the old route to Varanasi and you basically can frame such kind of statements and as we have seen the Buddha is in a Bhumi Isparsh Mudra. Guys do uh, uh, have a brief about some mudra from yourself. We can also take in the other classes regarding the various mudras of Gautam Buddha and it is very important part. So, let us move on to the next question. Our answer was Jharkhand here. The next question is about uh, the monks of the sect, consider the following statement, the monks of the sect eat in a standing posture only once a day, they carry a pickup fur to clean the path so that no insects are killed and guys you know the in Jainism the killing is very you know the kind of violence even as small insects or uh, can be considered as a violence. And uh, so, the, um, as you know, the, in Swetambar, they all also wear the uh, white clothes on their mouth to avoid killing the bacteria also. So, 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 this was the greatest of the ideology which was followed by Jainism. Further, we can see that they believe that discarding worldly positions uh, make them able to refuse to give into the body's demand for comfort. Now, looking at by these three statements, we have to find that the above talks about which of the following is it, are they Therapanthis, Nathpanthis, Svetambara or Digambaras? So, friends, our answer would be here, Digambaras. Why Digambar? That the monks of the sect only eat in a standing portion on only once a day, not after every two and three hours of meal. And they carry a peacock fur to, uh, on their path, so they can, they, you can wipe the path so they are traveling and it can prevent the killings. And further, according to their belief, that discarding the worldly portion make them able to refuse to give in the body's demand for comfort. So, they are called Digambaras. Digambaras, why? Because they are the naked ones and they do not wear the clothes because wearing the clothes make them more sensible and it distracted them from the path of achieving, achieving the salvation. Fine. Thank you very much.